Hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Tally Moss. Welcome to my organic food forest. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my first banana bloom or my banana plant that I've been growing for almost two years. I'm going to also share with you our first Concord seedless grapes that are ripe. And I'm going to show you how I make tomato sauce and how I freeze my okra. I'm so excited. I can't even think straight. I believe after two years, I'm finally going to get bananas. Oh, pray, Bria and Brian, okay? okay? That we get bananas. Oh my goodness. I am so excited. <laughs> I so prayed it's... for the bananas. You prayed for it? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I prayed God for it. You prayed to God? Yeah. Thank you. It smells God. yummy. Yeah, leave it on, Bria. Okay, let's back it up, guys. Let you see how tall this is. Wow. Oh, my goodness. After all these years, two years yeah. of nursing these. Banana plants. Don't play with it, son. You cannot play with it, Brian. Okay. And I just want to very quickly uh, pan over here and show you this little bitty one that Land Farmer 73 on uh, eBay. Pardon me. I'm so excited when YouTube sent me this little pup. It's an ice cream banana. He said, Miss Cheryl, I gotta send you something that I know will produce flowers so, and, and fruit. So I'm just so excited. <laughs> Never give up, guys. Never what, give up. Wow. Woo! It's gotta be at least 13 feet high. Yes. Brian, I asked you not to touch them. You cannot touch them like puppies. Okay, go ahead. What is this? Okay, go ahead, Brian. Touch it? Yeah. No, don't touch it. Oh, we. Oh, come on, come on, Bria. I'm going to go do get. I see? One, let me go get one more picture of my flower, my banana flowering. And usually what happens after that is you start to get your rack. I'm going to move this out the way. You get your rack of bananas. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I purchased this uh, Musa Tall Orinoco Banana Cold Hardy Pup on eBay for around $25. And I purchased it in October of 2017. So technically, it won't be two years old until October. I grew it the first year in a pot, and then I put it in the ground last uh, fall. And I uh, cut them down about two feet high. And I put a lot of mulch over it in a mini greenhouse. And then I uncovered them in the spring. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy that we finally um, uh, see the plant produce a flower. And hopefully we'll get bananas soon. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description box showing you uh, a couple videos that I made about my progress of my banana plants. Now here are my Concord Purple Seedless Grapes. I planted these for my grandchildren, uh, especially Bria because she loves grapes and we have to make sure that we get the seedless ones for her. I planted uh, two of them uh, last winter and one this fall and all three plants vined out really well and uh, we've got a few grapes. Now these grapes are much smaller than they're going to be in the future. Um, as home uh, gardeners tendency, have a tendency to get smaller grapes. And keep in mind that I only feed it compost tea, fish emulsion, uh, comfrey tea, worm castings, and that's it, people. I don't use any type of chemical fertilizers on my fruit, trees, vegetables, anything in my garden. So we were very happy that we got grapes the first year. We weren't really expecting them. Okay, guys. Those are our Concord purple grapes. Uh, how do they taste? Good. Okay, try another one. You like it, Bria? Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? Yummy. Yummy? What does it taste like, Brian? You're not chewing yours up, Brian. You don't want it? 
Brian doesn't like a lot of uh, fruit and vegetables, but he's doing better because he will eat what we grow, correct? Correct. All right. You don't like the skin, Maria? Uh -uh. Okay, but the grape is good, okay? Right? Is it good? Yes. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Do you want another one, Bria? Uh, yes. Here's another one. I just washed it. And I'm going to eat the last one. It's very, very juicy and sweet. Tastes like sugar. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have to eat the skin or the peel or whatever you want to call it. Just the inside, right? Okay, say thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye now. <laughs> so I harvested most of my tomatoes before I went to uh, Disney World on vacation. And what I do, guys, is I pull them when they're almost ripe. And I put them on my kitchen windowsill. And then after they ripen all the way, I just freeze them whole. After I wash them off, I put them in the freezer. So... This is how they look when they're almost ripe. This is how they look. I freeze them individually on a pan, on a pan or cooking sheet, and then I put them into individual bags. And now I'm going to show you how I make sauce. Hello, gardeners. Here's a one-minute video showing you how I make tomato sauce from my homegrown tomatoes that I have previously uh, froze in the freezer. Well, I just take the tomatoes out and I let them thaw out for about a half an hour in a closed pot outside on my uh, patio. And then I brought them in and I brought them to a boil, skins and all, uh, and then reduce the heat and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Then I let the pot cool down and I put it in the refrigerator overnight. This morning, around 6 o'clock, before it gets hot, I started making my sauce. I took the tomatoes and I pureed them in my um, blender. Seeds, core, peelings, and all. And then I added, and this it made about 12 cups. And then I added just a pinch of pickling salt and a cup and a half of pure lemon juice. And then I'm simmering it for about an hour. And then I'm going to uh, ladle it up in water bath candy for 20 minutes. And that's it. Now, I'm not going to attempt to give you instructions on how to water bath can. I'm going to leave that to the experts. So I recommend that you purchase or read the ball book of canning and preserving and follow all of their safety recommendations. This morning it was 67 degrees and the high was only 89. Now that's very unusual for us uh, being in North Texas. We're used to temps over 100 degrees um, around the end of July. So I took advantage of the cool weather and I sprayed uh, my entire food forest with uh, neem oil pure cold pressed neem oil and water as a uh, deterrent for insects. And we're usually plagued around this time of year with aphids, leaf, leaf hoppers, and uh, Japanese beetle. But anyway, um, the okra is doing real well, so I removed the shade cloth covers and um, let uh, the plants get a lot of sun. And the plants are producing about, we're up to around six pods of okra a day. Pretty soon, it'll be about a dozen a day. Okra is very easy to preserve. There are a lot of ways to do it. I like to blanch mine in boiling water for two minutes. Then I remove it and immerse it immediately into ice water. And then I let it dry or, you know, just drain. And then I put it in a food saver bag and process it and get all the air out and it will last for about 18 months in my freezer. Now this video was getting too long so I want to shorten it and I promise you in my next video I'll show you step by step how I freeze okra. I want to point out to you the reason why you see different colors in the okra is because I'm growing three different types and I'll go into detail in the next video. If you like this video please hit the like button and if you're new to my channel please subscribe and tell your family and friends about my channel. 
Thank you for watching. Bye now.